Oz, you've been doing really well this year with close battles at every race and your car seems to be improving every time as well. Tell us more about your season. Good evening, thank you. Um, well, as I was saying a little earlier, we were just having a casual chat and I was telling you about um, how I got into the sport. And it was uh, purely with an E82 that I bought uh, just for a bit of pleasure. And um, I started doing track days, BMW track days. And uh, from there I progressed to wanting to buy another, well, a faster car, a race car, which, which I ideally did in beginning of 2017. And um, I've been preparing this, well, I've been improving on this car for the last year and a half, or whatever we're into right now, it's probably 14 months. Uh, thoroughly enjoying it, um, done a lot of changes to the car to become more and more competitive. I am winning. Unfortunately, I've had a little bit of bad luck this year in that um, I had two DNFs um, due to some mechanical issues. Um, but my last two races I've won. And um, it's a fantastic sport to be in because I'm competing with youngsters of half my age and, um, and I'm beating them. So having great fun, really enjoying it and uh, can't wait for the next race. Thanks guys. We will be right back after the break to bring you highlights of the races from Midval. Welcome back. Up next, we head straight into all the race highlights of the Bridgestone BMW Car Club Racing Series. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, at Midval, ready to rock and roll now for this incredible bit of race action. As always, in the BMW Car Club Racing Series, some big fields and more importantly, big action. As they head down into turn number one now, keep an eye out on a couple of the usual contenders that'll be looking to get to the front end. Incredible uh, maneuver here from David Kutsia to find something special. He's been working hard on the Extreme Festival as well as on the Amtec Inland Championship to get his car all sorted out and it seems to be working very well. He's the man to catch so far as they head down into turn one. We go on board here with Shane Krobler. This is the Mayfair Gearbox BMW fighting hard there with that Viking mining BM right ahead. See just how tight it is here, and ooh, already started to show the inside line, finding an opportunity coming through turn number three. They head up onto uh, the back straight now, any second, and you can see the battle at the front end is going to be basically between three or four cars. Kutsia seems to have a little bit of an advantage, but Leroux is there, and so is Willy Erasmus. In the mid pack, keep an eye out on Craig Ball and Oz Bagioni, already going at it and looking for opportunities where there are some. Kutsia pulling away at the front end ever so slightly. You can see a really some action though, just behind as Leroux goes on the defensive. Oh, speaking of defensives, whew, there's a big move on the inside from Erasmus. Billy Erasmus dives on the inside, still in his old car, not in the new car right now. So they haven't quite got that car sorted out, but you can see the uh, Big Boss and Speed and Sound Machine is certainly working hard, even though it's smoking ever so slightly. As they come through into the final turn now to complete lap number one. Very, very hard action already from the start line. And uh, these guys are going to go all at it for the rest of this race. Back on board here with Rick as we go down into, into turn one. This 325 IS is exceptionally quick and handles pretty well, but oh, Kutsia giving you a bit of a run for his money there. Had to uh, just go on the defensive, loses out ever so slightly to uh, Rick Leroux as they go through turn two. Very, very long left-hander here. It flicks over into a right-hander and then, of course, a little squirt down the short straight that brings you into a big, big left-hander. Double apex corner and takes you onto that back straight. Kutsia's car will probably have the legs on the straight, so uh, keep an eye and see if he's able to catch onto the back end of the row. Leroux got good drive though. Paolo Leroux with some issues, always slowing. Paolo Leroux with a problem in the combined racing in TuneTech BMW. And the yellow machine, unfortunately, is going to be a yellow peril today because it's now going to have to park on the sideline. As I said, there you go, Kutsia using the additional bit of power that he's got. And he flies past Rick Leroux to get the lead again. The two of them coming out of that back straight through the complex section now. And uh, this is a tricky section, particularly when you go this way around in the circuit. You've got to hit these lines absolutely perfect. Mid-pack battles continue. Nice maneuver there from Jimmy T. Jimmy Tameglu fighting hard with Anthony Marks, and he's just ahead. Keep an eye on uh, the maneuvers that are going to be happening there. Tony Marks, Warren Dodd, and Jimmy T, and Alan Hilgen in there as well, having a super, super battle. Side-by-side -side action at the bottom of the straight. This can only mean the inside line is probably the best place to be. Unfortunately, there you can see Leroux's car parked on the sideline, but continued action there as Villiers Erasmus goes at it with Jan Everstein. 
Ever starting Craig Ball just in the mix there as well. He's just off the back end, trying to close down on these guys. You can see the red car starting to make his way up. It's going to be a five car battle here, potentially, for what is going to be third place on track. Osba Gioni, the pool man, keeping out the youngster. And it looks like he's going to have his uh, work cut out for him. Back on board once again with the two leaders, Rick Leroux, looking for another chance. Oh, and he gets up the inside. Was that a missed gear? Possibly coming out of there in the wrong gear there. David Kutsia just not getting the, the right drive onto this back straight. But uh, have a look at this power now as he puts the hammer down. Oh, brilliant. Into the slipstream. That little 325 IS of Leroux is incredibly quick. But unfortunately, the big 328 has got that little bit of extra power and, of course, the turbo. And it just helps out as he goes down that main straight and retakes the lead. Into turn five they go now. Back into the complex. Larea is not letting him have it all his own way though. He is definitely fighting hard and looking for chances and for possibilities of stealing that win away. He is all over the back. Katsia, as I said, been working hard. Oh, there's a move on the inside. Larea had a big look. Sure, that could have ended up in tears. Fortunately, he got on the inside there and uh, didn't touch, but uh, there's enough room out there to play, that's for sure. Further back in the field see things starting to heat up as well in amongst these cars and this is such a good opportunity for guys like this and look at how Rainier is just getting through there Rainier Smith finding a way through there and Robler the big M5 losing out some ground there but the M5 <laughs> oh here we go V8 power down the back straight away and thank you for coming there you go Krobler retakes uh, that position and takes Rainier Smith one down and one position back into ninth so this is a battle basically to keep them inside the top 10 Great little battle here as well between these two. They're not going to hold back anything there. Renia Smith just trying to come back at that big M5. Just behind them. Keep an eye on Sab Guterri and on Sean Lamprecht, who are also in the little mix there. Further back in the field, triple two. Awesome stuff to see Clippy's Cricker having some fun and games. And going at it with Ari Van Heerden. Van Heerden also in a 325 IS. Diving on the inside. Big wing on it. Trying to use the uh, downforce as much as he can. So it's going to be uh, literally to the line for a couple of these battles. Vilja Rasmus. Oh... This is super to see. <laughs> Osbo Gioni and Video Rasmus side by side down that back straight away. And it looks like uh, Rasmus might just have the edge. Look at how he just uses that inside curb. Lot of laps around the circuit. This young man, even though he's got a, a short career, he's basically been uh, at it since he was about uh, 13 or 14 years of age. So he definitely knows mid -ball very well. And it doesn't matter which way you go. I was going to have to find something special now in the closing stages. In the mid-pack again. Look at how they're just chopping and changing there. A little bit of smoke and tires there. Guys starting to heat up and uh, lock up the wheels. Be a little bit of an issue with some of the cars, but ne ne nevertheless, it is a fantastic battle, as always, here in the Bridgestone BMW Car Club Racing Series. Sean Lumprecht in that little fight and maintaining the, the battles. Speaking of battles, this one has continued all the way through. You can see the big number 100, Mike Krobler. And a little bit of back markers coming into play now. Krobler going to go around the outside. And look for a chance to get through there on the number 31. Can he find a way past? Not quite sure if Yanni Breath saw them coming. He eventually did. Gets out the way. And then that steam train heads down the back straight. Well, I said it was a bit of tire smoke. It actually looks like it's more than tire smoke. Whoa, that's a big one. That is a big, big one there for Craig Withers. Unfortunately, got out of shape. And Withers just getting it a little bit out of shape. Coming out of the back straight. And, uh, oof. Tried to take some evasive action there. The car that was smoking. I was about to say, that's a car that I thought... Had a bit of tire smoke, but it looks like it might be a bit of engine smoke. Very lucky to survive that one, but Withers, very lucky to get the car stopped before the rest of that pack, which was led out by Sean Lumprecht, got to him and just avoided the man who spun out. Big flame out of David Kutsia as he heads towards the line. The chequered flag will be waiting, and a double... Oh, what a win. That is a fantastic effort there from him. Beating out Rick Leroux eventually by 1.7 seconds. And Vidya Rasmus into third place for Class B's. It's Craig Ball, Bagioni and Krobler, the top three in Class C. As we move on to Class D at the top, great effort there from Nick to beat out Warren Dodd. And Alan Hillegen coming through for third place. I didn't qualify too well, so, uh, but it's been another great day for uh, Bavaria 0.0 .0 racing team. Uh, started six on the grid. Uh, unfortunately, I think Paolo had an issue, so he dropped out. And then it was an interesting scrap uh, with Vili and... Uh, uh, Oz and Oz was locking up a lot. Uh, I don't know if uh, the pressure was getting to him or something was wrong with his car, but uh, yeah, and then I think he had a problem going down the straight, maybe a vibration, heavy vibration, and uh, I was able to catch him. And, and uh, Craig was pushing me all the time, so we had a nice scrap there, and it was, uh, yeah, and it was awesome. It was a great day, and we'll wait for uh, race two, and we'll see how it goes. First lap, I started having fueling issues on the car, so I fell all the way to the back, made up a few positions, and then had the same issue over and over again. 
So yeah, well, is what it is. I'm not sure if we scored any points, but yeah, let's see what we can take from this one. Straight into heat two, and uh, this time we've got a slightly different front of the field as they head down into turn number one. Watch out for David Katsia coming from the back of that uh, reverse grid. And already Lamprex showing some uh, prowess there, trying to squeeze through and go with those top runners. He's got a slightly better start, Jimmy T on his tail. But already the pressure coming through there as the five car starts to make its way through. That's Rainier Smith. Look out from uh, just behind Rainier Smith. Keep an eye out, of course, for the number 100 car. That's definitely going to be a man to watch out for in this one. But now as they come down under braking to get onto that back straight, you can see them all starting to sort things out there. Ball goes around the outside and he tries to get a good line on Jimmy T. Going to try and use the slipstream effect down that back straight. Look at this, and 20 marks giving us a great opportunity to see how well that slipstream effect works. There's one car slotting in. That's Jimmy T. He gets into the mid-pack and he pulls out. There you go, on the brakes down into uh, the back end of that back straightaway. Whoa, Vilja Rasmus being hounded there by Sav. Sav all over the back end of him, looking for a way through and cannot find it just yet. But look at how tight it is between these guys as they come into the complex. Front end, it is all about Larea trying to get to the front and he, he, he knows he has to get to the front as early as possible. If he doesn't find a way through here on the leader, it looks like it's going to be a bit of an issue. And I tell you what, Jan Everstein is doing everything right to try and uh, make that BMW as wide as possible. He runs ever so slightly wide, unfortunately, and that might give Larea a chance. David Katsia now also looking to use the power down that back straight. Look at that. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Yanni Briet trying to squeeze between the two of them and thread the needle, but he cannot find a way past. Here comes Katsia, late on the brakes, all the way down the inside, on the grass even. Oh, he runs into the grass and off, nearly takes out Everstein. Everstein just avoiding the uh, maneuver there from David Katsia. That was very late braking. Katsia had to do it all right, and he did. But he ran a little bit wide and nearly took two cars out, but fortunately, the two of them stayed on track. So it's now Leroux that leads out. Katsia in second. And Leroux looks looking for a double victory here if he can get it, that's for sure. They pulled away ever so slightly from the rest of that pack. And you can see Everstein now is under threat. Looking for a way past his Villa Rasmus. Seven versus one. Single digit numbers fighting hard here. And Everstein trying yet again to try and make that BMW of his as wide as possible. Oh, Villa onto the dirt slightly. That might compromise his drive. David Katsia now using the additional powers we've seen all day long in the Oscar competition machine. Goes flying down and through. Under braking. He's got that all sorted this time. A little bit earlier on the brakes. Didn't have to quite go as aggressive as what he did earlier on. But a super effort nonetheless to get to the front. Leroux in second. Fighting hard. Rick is not going to let this one go. The little red rocket is certainly flying. And definitely in with a shot here of giving Kutsia uh, a little bit of hassles to the line. There's still a little bit of a way to go there in this race. It's not done yet between these two. In the background. Billy Rasmus now on the inside, looking for a chance to get the outbreaking maneuver. Can he get it on Everstein? No, he's not close enough. Everstein just able to outbreak him into turn one. Erasmus takes a slightly wider line, watch him cut back and use the inside line on the exit point of turn two, that big double left-hander. As they come through, he'll try and cut back and get on the inside. No, but oh, Everstein saw him coming and forced him wide. <laughs> wide enough to put him on the dirt again. Jan Everstein is making his BMW exceptionally wide and the Bavaria car is not going to be an easy one to pass here. Erasmus is going to have to try and use something special that he's got in uh, up his sleeve possibly to find a way past. Here we go back again into the battle yet again between these two. No worries at all in terms of how they've been fighting hard but they have been fighting hard and that's great to see. Jimmy T just ahead of them there. So he's not normally in the mix with these two but Mark Krubler certainly knows what to do in this M5. And can he just get past Jimmy T and maybe put some air glue between himself and the hard charge coming from behind. You can see how he's just left in the background, Rainier Smith. But Rainier now has to try and find a way through on Jimmy T as well. Let's see if he can find that. I'm not quite sure he's going to be able to do that here through the complex. He'll have to wait until he gets onto the main straight. Further back, you can see some great little battles. Troy Cochran in there as well. And looks like oh, just keeping an eye on the background as in 20 marks goes through there. Keep an eye on the background in these shots because the leaders should be coming into sight any second. And they're going to be uh, certainly in with a run for their money. Hillegen already got a third place in the first one. He's looking to be a slightly, probably higher up on that podium if he can get there. Battle continues here as Villa Erasmus tries to find a way past, but cannot do it. It is so, so tight between these guys. Yanni Briot just ahead of them, but uh, a super effort here from Jan Everstein. This is a bit closer. Oh, good move there. I thought it was a little bit closer. I thought he might wait until he gets onto turn one, but he waits until the last corner and dives on the inside and gets through. Everstein wasn't expecting that. He goes defensive to keep Jan out. 
Oh, I don't know about that one. I had two maneuvers there. You're only allowed to make one. But anyway, <laughs> the speed inside car has just been able to get through there on that Bavaria BMW. And looks like uh, Billy might be able to hold that line now. You can see the ability of the big boss and speed and sound car through that left hand. A slightly better handling car. It got away about a car length over Everstein through that. Further back, Lumprecht continues the battle with Ball. Him side by side, the two of them. This is great to see. Mixing it up. Oh, and there comes Baggioni as well. Oz is in the, in the fight too. Three of them down the back straight. Could they go three by three down towards this turn? This is turn five. They come to at the bottom. Oh, it is so tight. Baggioni's on the inside though. And he managed just to squeeze through there. So uh, good maneuver there from Baggioni, just finding uh, a special line onto that back straight. Uses the drive he got onto the back straight and gets through. Katsia with the double in his hands. A super effort here and a great day's racing and uh, all the seat time he's had is definitely paying off. He comes through to take the victory and a double win on the day ahead of Rick Larreau. And coming through there for third place will be Yanni Briet. In Class C it was Os, Os Baggioni who hung on ahead of Lungprecht. And then uh, a great effort from Craig Ball in the Rock Solid Industries BMW to take third place. Macris comes through for the win in Class D, he's beating Warren Dodd and Neil Reynolds up in the top three in the Vision Automation BMW. Awesome effort here from all of our BMWs. Yeah, I know. I mean, the turbo cars are just way too quick, so they pass us on the straight. Actually, I was surprised they came so quickly, and we all break the. I think there were four of us breaking into that corner. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, a nice, uh, scary moment. And then uh, I know what Oz felt like in the first round. I had uh, Billy chasing me the whole way, and uh, it was great fun. Eventually he caught me. I didn't let him go, but uh, yeah, he was just a little bit too quick. Uh, I was struggling a bit with the rear tyres. They're a bit old now, but uh, we'll see what happened next race. And uh, looking forward to uh, SWAT Cops in a couple of weeks. I'm ecstatic. You know what? I'm using the little 3 to 8, and um, the M3 is still busy being uh, repaired and so forth. But I'll tell you what. Uh, sticking with the guys that are top of the, the class, I, uh, I, I stood my ground. I'm really, really chuffed on how it went, absolutely. Weekend went well. I had a bit of a bad qualifying, but nevertheless, I went through the grid in race one. And then uh, I did race two, and I tried to keep my position. And it went very well, thanks to Big Boss also fixing my, my car from the previous uh, hiccup that I had. And then thanks to my sponsors and that. Thank you very much. Eh? That's a wrap for this show. Remember to keep up to date with the Inland Championship by our website, Facebook, YouTube and Twitter pages. I'm Nicole Kappa. Until next time, goodbye.